Chapter five. Me and Vega inched down the icy front steps of our middle school. I still didn't believe that winter break was already over and I was back in class again. The two weeks off sure seemed like nothing now. It was brick cold out this January afternoon. Vega was wearing the new shiny black parka that his grandma and DR had given him for three kings. Vega had told me that in the Dominican Republic, Three Kings Day was actually a bigger holiday than Christmas Day, or at least as big. Before the little kids in DR would go to bed the night before Three Kings, they would leave small boxes of grass underneath their beds. The grass was meant to feed the camels that the three wise men would be riding. The next morning, the kids would wake up to find a bunch of presents loaded at the foot of their beds. So for them, it was like having two Christmases every year. I remember thinking that wasn't fair and I asked my mother if they had three kings in Trinidad. Though my mom calls herself Trini for Trinidadian, she had never ever been, to, she had never even been to Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. Her parents had been born there, but ever since my grandma found out that her daughter had started dating women, she didn't speak to mom much. Mr. Alley will want to talk to you, Vega said. I ran into him before school. You do something? I suppose I know what Mr. Alley wanted to talk about, but I wasn't looking forward to it. Alley scared me sometimes. How's your violin, Vega? I asked, not wanting to talk about Mr. Alley. Vega and I had cut to the middle school, to the middle of the street. All the kids were hanging so deep in front of our school that we couldn't move on the sidewalk. Miss D says, I'm coming along, Vega answered. He had been playing since he was nine. He wasn't that bad. I didn't think anyone was expecting him to play violin in nobody's orchestra any time, but listening to him didn't make your ears bleed. Watch out, Vega called to me in the street. He held me back. This girl, Tisha, sat, shouted like somebody had cut her and ran in front of us. She stopped hard and grabbed the sleeve of Vega's new coat to keep him from falling. He jerked his sleeve away from her. Another boy, Freddie, came chasing after Tisha. He, uh, he bear hugged her and they both slumped to the street laughing. Me and Vega stepped over them. I almost kicked them instead. I had been so mean lately. I can't believe she yanked my new coat, Vega said, examining it for damage. I was only going to wear it around our place or on special occasions. Then I thought, that'd be stupid. Yeah, that would be stupid. How would you only wear a parka inside your apartment? Shut up. We stare, started back towards West 127th Street, toward after school and Mr. Alley. The funny thing about Mr. Alley was his face. His face was weird. On one side of it, it just got out of balance. The left side of his face was normal. His right side kind of seemed like somebody had smashed his skull with a hammer and put the pieces back together again only the pieces hadn't fit right. Me and Vega walked quietly for a while until he asked me again about my castle. Besides my mother and Yvonne, he was the only one I had told about it. But I still hadn't let him come down to our apartment to inspect it. Lawman, why don't you let me see your secret project you built? He asked. I shrugged. You must be embarrassed about it, he said. I didn't respond because I knew Vega was only saying that to try to trick me into showing him. Ever since Yvonne had given me all those Legos for Christmas, I'd been building. Started in my bedroom and then that got too small. I moved what I'd been building into the living room and it got even bigger. Ma had loved my castle when it stayed in my bedroom. After I moved it, she started to grumble and Ma was losing patience with it taking up so much space. It was a good thing that ever since Jermaine had gone, she had let me get away with more stuff that I didn't use to get away with. Lots of times I only needed to serve up a sad face and she would back down. Vega, Vega and me crossed over 125th Street. They're following us, Vega said to me, dipping his head behind mine. I tracked where his skull cap had pointed and I saw those same two older boys that had followed me on Christmas Eve. They from East 127th, Vega said. They've been stressing my cousin to join the set. That would make you and your cousin enemies. Vega used his glove to wipe his nose. 
let's move, he said, and we took off running toward after school before the two older boys could catch us. Shut your pothole face, Nappy, Sunshine said, whispering at Vega. Moonshine, Vega whispered back to Sunny. She glared at him. Every afternoon after school, these two went at it like this. Sunshine would make fun of Vega's not, knotted up hair, and he would tease about how dark-skinned she was. And I had to sit right in the middle of it. Our after-school program was for St. Nick residents and those who lived in the hood. It was located in the community center on the far side of the projects, about as far away from my building as you could get and still be in my development. It was mostly about forcing us to do homework and, help getting, and getting help studying. But we sometimes did fun things like go on trips or learn to make things like homemade windmills or different types of recipes. I'd been coming to the St. Nick after school for years. It was probably why Vega and me had become best friends. Today, Miss Jenna had just finished showing us how to make fresh hummus from scratch using olive oil and garlic and cans of chickpeas. Most of the time at after school, we studied and learned things but sometimes they gave us classes on how to be more healthy. To me, hummus in my mouth didn't taste too healthy at all. None of the kids thought it did, except for Daryl Buckney, who was crazy anyhow. He was a fat boy with a mustache and on some kind of meds. Miss Jenna thought her hummus tasted good. She was our main after-school instructor. For somebody white from Ohio, she had a big butt. When she strolled up here every day along Frederick Douglass Boulevard from the A train, Miss Jenna would get all kinds of shouts and whistles from dudes wanting to hit her up because of her big butt. It disgusted her, she said. Vega, you smell like the subway, Sunny whispered. Not ever, but every subway stinks, mammal, he whispered back. Yeah, but we're all mammals, dummy, she said. Sunny shine. Dixon Knight, or Sunny, wasn't bad looking, but her attitude made her ugly. She was tall for a girl and usually wore her head in braids. She had dark, smooth skin that looked like it was carved out of midnight. Vega pretended like he was about to pop her. Sunny dared him, lifting her chin. Nappy, she whispered at him. My best friend's hair was like a bush of thick black wires. It was almost like Vega's body grew so much hair, his head didn't know what to do with it. I think he grew at least an inch of hair every night when he slept. You better not touch me, Vega, Sunny warned. Lolly will punch you in the neck if you do. She smiled at me. Everyone, I have to step out for a moment, Miss Jen told us kids. Start your homework, I'm just down the hall. Before she left, she scowled at us, as if to say there would be problems if we acted up while she was gone. We got the message. Well, most of us did. A couple of minutes of us studying in peace, Daryl Buckney said, Ugh, smells like balls in here. We all laughed. I told you you stank, Sunny told Vega. Then Quintesha, Quintesha Charles said, Somebody farted. Why did Quintesha have to say that? Daryl B. flew up out of his seat and started sniffing at everybody's butts to see who had farted. Hey, hey, Vega shouted at him. Leave my bumpe alone. Everybody laughed some more, but when Daryl B. had got to my seat and was standing behind me about to sniff my butt, I stood up and slung my pencil at him. Of course, right when I threw my pencil was when Miss Jenna had decided to stroll back inside the study room. Miss Jen, he tried to smell my booty, I shouted. He stared at Daryl. Miss Jen asked him, should I recommend they put you back on your medication, young man? He looked ashamed after hearing this. I felt a little sorry for him. Anyway, so she embarrassed him and I still got yelled at for hurling my pencil. Daryl B. just giggled in that weird kind of way he did, like a wild hyena. Miss Jenna said, Lolly, Mr. Alley wants to see you in his office. My stomach gurgled. Everybody in the room gave me a look. Daryl B. laughed. Cut it out, Miss Jenna told him. Then she said to me, Mr. Alley wants, she didn't finish. Well, let's just, let's just go see him, hun. 